you for joining us. I'm Toga Eid, the director of the King's Fund in Cambridge, and my guest today is Dr. Eduardo Gallo. We're here to talk about your new King's Fund project, Monetary Networks. What is your research question? Uh, the main question that we look at is how uh, cooperation uh, or exchange uh, emerges in a society. And the focus is to look at uh, two forces. The first force is uh, informal networks. So these are uh, informal relations that uh, uh, we all have that uh, allow us to uh, cooperate uh, within uh, this uh, network. And one example of this uh, is uh, situations in which there's a small society, think about a village uh, where there's a small number of people, they all know each other, and a lot of the exchange and, and cooperation in this society is channeled through these informal networks. The second force is uh, a monetary or credit system. This is something that uh, all of you are very familiar with that we use uh, on an everyday life. And it's something that enables uh, cooperation and exchange uh, in a large society where it's anonymous uh, and therefore you need some external system to actually uh, enact a transaction. Uh, the focus on the, of the project is to uh, understand uh, the causal channel from uh, social networks to uh, cooperation and then from a monetary system to uh, cooperation and also uh, their interaction. And we're going to investigate the causal element of this channel using uh, an experiment that really allows us to uh, isolate each force and then look at them together. What are you looking at that hasn't been addressed before? The interaction between these two forces uh, is really the no novel part of the research question. So if we think about uh, the connection between the first force, which is informal networks uh, and cooperation, there is a, uh, a relatively large uh, body of work that has looked uh, at uh, this question. I've also contributed to it. For example, the um, project uh, published in the uh, PNAS, the TOKE, um, mentioned at the beginning looks uh, at the way in which social networks help cooperation to emerge and be sustained uh, and in particular how um, a reputational system um, is important in that process and how the knowledge that you have about the network is important uh, in that process when it comes to the second force there is a literature in um, experiments um, essentially macro experiments and my co-authors uh, on, on this uh, project, Maria Bigoni and Gabriele Camera, have contributed to this literature uh, that looks at the spontaneous emergence of a monetary system, so of money, uh, in a society that is um, anonymous. They look at an experimental setting that is anonymous and everything happens uh, bilaterally without a network. So the novel element of this project is to actually look at the intersection of these two forces. And a key question is, whether once we introduce uh, a monetary system, for example, in a society where cooperation is happening through the channel of you know, the networks or the informal channel, uh, does the monetary system replace the network? This is what economists would call, uh, are, you know, where the, these two elements, these two forces are substitutes, or uh, does it actually enhance the network? And these would be what economists call complements. Um, and uh, we're going to be able to investigate uh, this um, uh, interaction and uh, how, for example, the introduction monster system may disrupt some of these inform informal relations that are existing or, or change them in a way that makes them more effective. How can your research help us understand more about the economy and society? One thing that I uh, mentioned is uh, how social networks can enable uh, cooperation and um, exchange, for example, in small society like uh, villages. Uh, there is um, quite a bit of uh, recent work, uh, for example, by Banerjee and Duflo that looks at the importance of these social networks in villages in developing countries. One common way in which economists come into this context to try to improve the lives of um, of the people is to actually implement some type of market institution. And sometimes this actually leads to um, uh, consequences that are detrimental because something that was working before through these informal channels uh, is disrupted and the new system that is put in place 
um, actually leads to what we would call a different equilibrium that is worse than what we had uh, before. Now, the experiment looks at a specific type of market system that is a very fundamental, which is uh, uh, the implementation of a monetary or credit uh, system, and it's going to allow us to see in what way it may uh, disrupt uh, something that uh, was working at, uh, at an informal level. And that this can uh, give us lessons that, that we can apply to other contexts in which there is an interaction between the markets and uh, um, informal means of ensuring exchange and, and the working of an economy. One of the objectives of the Keynes Fund is to encourage interdisciplinary research. How does your project do that? I care deeply about uh, interdisciplinary research and uh, the main area I work in, which is network science, um, has a lot of interdisciplinary uh, collaborations. In the case of this project, I already mentioned how uh, it touches upon themes that are studied in sociology and political sciences. Uh, for example, Putnam's work that I mentioned before. And, and this work is really sort of complementary to that body of literature because uh, it looks at the causal channel through the experimental methods, uh, while that literature uh, looks at uh, outcomes in the, in the real world through observational data. Um, outside of the social sciences, there is a large body of work that looks at uh, uh, the emergence and uh, sustenance of cooperation in biological systems. Uh, so uh, obviously humans are uh, just one small aspect of these uh, biological systems. And within this literature, there's quite a bit of work that looks at the role of uh, networks as one channel through which cooperation is actually sustained. Now within that literature, one aspect of this project that um, uh, I hope can contribute to uh, is the fact that one of the things we are varying in the experiment is the size of the society that we look at. Now, this is essential for the economic questions because one of our hypotheses is that uh, networks, informal networks, are going to be very effective in a small society, and maybe a monetary system implemented in a small society disrupts that. Uh, but when it comes to a large society, and in the actual experiments we're going to look at societies of about 50 uh, individuals, um, it's going to be very difficult for informal relations to actually work and we believe that a monetary system is going to work better. Uh, now, the question of how the amount of cooperation changes as you change the size, uh, and especially how the network's uh, mechanism works at different sizes, is something that hasn't been uh, looked at and it could be applicable also uh, in other systems that are not just uh, the specific um, human economy that we look at. Mm -hmm.